wanted to put this together. Um, we spoke with OSI about it a few weeks ago, I think in the wake of a training Tuesday or just before a training Tuesday. Um, so I'm the co-chair of the Gaming and Esports Club. I'm here with another member of my eboard, uh, Justin Bella. Um, we are aware, obviously, that this semester has presented a lot of sort of really unique and sort of unprecedented challenges in terms of engagement, in terms of communication, just because the overwhelming majority of the student body is not on campus. Um, all across campus, you know, we found sort of a lot of different ways to overcome this. We found a lot of different tools. We've come up with a lot of different systems. Um, but, you know, uh, oddly enough and appropriately enough, the Gaming and Esports Club, you know, for the last two years, really, way prior to our approval, um, we haven't really been using any of those tools that have now come into common use. We've been using a tool called Discord. And as we sort of came into this semester, we became really aware and really conscious of how useful Discord has been for us, but also how useful it could be for other organizations on campus and not just student organizations, but like academic organizations and certain uh, higher up like offices as well. Um, we think it has a lot of really unique features. We think it has a lot of potential. Obviously it was sort of made for, for us as sort of, you know, techies and gamers, but you know, that doesn't mean we're the only ones who are allowed to use it. And, and we do genuinely think that it's um, better than a lot of options that are on the table. And so this smaller presentation is sort of meant to, to go through and basically um, familiarize people with it because some people may have heard of Discord, some people may have never heard of it, some people may have used it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of depth to it that we think makes it a really great platform. And so we, we want to share that with people and we hope that people can um, make something of it. So with that being said, the first sort of obvious question is what is Discord? Like what, what the hell is it? What, what this weird word that keeps getting thrown up and like this face, like what's this face in this chat bubble? It's like, it's weird. It's crazy. It's out there. What is it? Well, it's a communication platform. It's very similar to Zoom. It's very similar to GroupMe. Um, you know, it's similar to Skype, uh, AOL, Instant Messenger. Like <laughs> I could sort of go on and on. It's just a communication platform, but it has a lot of unique features that we're gonna go through here. The first sort of biggest difference that sets Discord apart from most other communication platforms is that that communication takes place in servers. We're gonna talk about servers in a minute, so like don't panic that you need to know what that word means, we're gonna get into it. But most communication platforms that exist today, including Zoom um, and Skype and most others, uh, don't really have a dedicated backbone. They sort of rely on the person who is hosting that Zoom meeting or that Skype call. And you may have noticed this if you have Zoom classes with a professor whose internet is not so great, the moment that their internet starts acting up, everybody's Zoom call starts acting up. Um, and so Discord, because it's hosted on their end as opposed to the user's end, uh, the performance becomes a lot more consistent and a lot more reliable. And if one person is sort of having performance issues, it doesn't impact everybody else. There are a few other advantages to it being run on servers, which are that those servers support multiple different channels for text chat and for voice chat, video chat, screen sharing, everything that you might expect from like a Zoom call, um, Discord servers can also support and they can support more than one of those at once. Um, and sort of, it, you don't have to create channels, those little channels as you need them. People can sort of drop in and drop out. They can move between them. Uh, people with the correct permissions, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, can sort of manually move people around. Um, and it allows essentially simultaneous conversations. Um, people can be talking in multiple text channels at once. People can't be talking in multiple voice channels, but multiple voice channels can exist. Um, so the closest thing that Zoom has to that would be breakout rooms. Um, 
you know, basically having a space where a few people can talk in room A and a few people can talk in room B. Um, you know, you can do small group activities that way. You can have sort of private rooms that only certain people can join, um, things like that. It can also just be a good way to separate conversations if, you know, 50 people want to talk at once, maybe you want to split them up so that they're not all talking over each other. Um, servers are always on, which kind of seems like a really simple thing. But if you think about like a Zoom call, for instance, a Zoom call does not always exist. You have to wait for the host to start it. Um, you have to, if the room has a waiting room, then you have to wait in the waiting room to join. And once the host leaves, if they don't hand off control to another user, then it just sort of disappears and it's, you know, gone forever and they have to, you know, re-enable it or they have to make it a scheduled meeting. Discord servers don't have any of that. It's always there. If you want to log on at 3 a.m. And, and talk to whoever's around, you can do that. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to make that happen. It's always there. This next point is a little bit subjective and it's kind of hard to just express in words. So part of this presentation is going to be sort of a minor demonstration of what Discord actually looks like. But for now, I promise, just take my word for it. It is really easy to set up. It's really easy to use both if you're running a server or if you're part of a server. And it's also very easy to manage. Once you have it set up, it kind of just goes on its own. You don't have to constantly baby it. You don't have to, you know, like keep your hands on the controls or else it'll break. It's really easy to just set up and get it going no matter what you need it to do. Um, as we said kind of earlier on the title slide and also in the sort of advertisement for this session, it is very highly customizable in a lot of different ways. Um, if you've ever tried to host a Zoom call or pretty much used any communication platform, the customization kind of stops at your profile picture and everything else is just sort of, you know, the way it is. Discord is not like that. There are a ton of different elements of the platform that can be customized and sort of made to look and act pretty much however you want or need. This is also another big thing, the fact that a lot of services that can run on multiple platforms don't run on all of the platforms. Um, GroupMe, for example, is, you know, sort of a, a classic one that, you know, gets kicked around at freshman orientation. And it's like, oh, we'll just throw everybody into a GroupMe and, and now everyone's using GroupMe. GroupMe really only works on mobile. You can get it on your desktop, I think. I think you can get it on Windows, but it's really meant to be used on your phone. Zoom, on the other hand, is meant to be used on your computer. You can use it on your phone, but it's not really the same experience. And it's sort of like a different set of steps to, to get it to work. And it becomes very disjointed and kind of hard to use. Discord pretty much offers the exact same experience no matter what you use it on. If you want to use it on your computer, fine. PC, Mac, doesn't matter. If you want to use it on your phone, iPhone, Android, doesn't matter. Most of these systems, you don't even have to download the software for it. Um, I know it runs just in Chrome. Like you can just go to discord.com and use it through Chrome. Pretty sure you can do it through Firefox, Safari, Edge. No reason to believe that it wouldn't run through those as well. But you know, if you're someone who is not a big fan of just downloading random software onto your computer, I totally get it. Um, you can just run it through a browser and it'll work essentially the exact same way. And it'll look the same way too. It's also free. You know, that's like, there's no asterisk. There's no hidden like fine print. It's free to, to use. You can run a server for free. You can join servers for free. It's all, it's all free. So this, this S word servers what right scary a little bit intimidating what does that mean what does that mean zoom doesn't use servers like skype doesn't use servers group me doesn't use servers why does discord use them what like what does that even mean well a server is essentially just a collection of channels and they're free to create and they're free to run you can set up as many as you want you can join as many as you want and they're just there they're basically just massive group chats with a lot more features to make it not a giant group chat. 
which is nice because giant group chats are kind of awful. Now, as we mentioned earlier, those servers are always on. They never shut off. You don't have to manually turn them on. So they're sort of available for like 24 seven communication, right? And you can customize them and sort of tailor them to whatever you need. And people can access that space wherever, wherever or whenever they want. Um, and this is sort of, when we were working on this presentation, this was actually a really key difference that we sort of came up with. If you think about a Zoom call, for example, as an event, right? Zoom call has a set start and end time. There's one person who runs it. You arrive for the Zoom call, you participate, and then you leave. A Discord server is less of an event and more of a space. It's somewhere where you can sort of come and go pretty much whenever you want. You can engage as much or as little as you want in sort of whatever format you want, and it's always there. Because the space never goes away. All you decide is whether or not you're participating in that space and being a part of it. Each server can have as many or as few channels as you like. So we mentioned channels earlier. We'll say more about them, I think, on the next slide or two slides from now. Um, as long as you have one text channel, that's really all you need uh, for a minimum. Apart from that, you can have as many channels as you want. You can name them whatever you want. You can sort of set them up however you want. Um, and you know you can set that up pretty much according to your needs, the needs of your organization, the needs of your group. Um, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. You can have as many as you want and you can use them for whatever you need. Um, as I said earlier, there's no limit to how many servers you can join or create. If there is a limit, I'm pretty sure it's, it's like so high that you would never technically reach it. I think it's like 500 or something. Um, if you ever find yourself in 500 servers, you won't find yourself in 500 servers. That is, as we will see later, that's a lot. Um, so there is essentially no limit. Um, and after all of this explanation, after all of this brouhaha, you can use Discord without servers. You don't have to create them or join them any at all because it's still just a communication platform. You have your own username and profile picture, just like any other communication platform. You have to set up an account to use it, but then there's a friends list and you can direct message people and you can set up group chats and you can have video calls and voice calls and screen sharing. You don't really lose any functionality by not joining any servers. You can still communicate with people pretty much whenever you want, as long as they're on your friends list and they are also on the platform. So channels, which are, which are what make up servers. You know, why should I use a server as opposed to just putting everyone in a group chat? It's because servers have channels. There are two main types of channels. And the first type that I've brought up a few times is a text channel. Like, what does that even mean, right? Because a big group me chat is a text channel a group chat on Snapchat or iMessage, like that's also a text channel. So what makes Discord text channels special? Um, they support a lot of, I don't want to say fun features, but they're, it's certainly a much more fully featured experience than you might see on other platforms. Here, when I say rich text, that means like bold, italic, underline, strike through, stuff that you would see in like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. You can put that in your messages on a Discord text channel. Um, you can send images. You can send, if you send a YouTube video, it will expand that YouTube video and people can watch it right there. They don't have to like open it in a browser. They can just click a little play icon and watch it right there. It supports emojis. What doesn't support emojis these days? It's just nice to have. Um, and you can also send small files in text channels. Um, you know, most files that like don't get posted on Canvas usually get sent out by email, but you know, it's still nice to be able to send stuff out multiple different ways if you just have you know, a, a PDF that needs to get sent to people or like a Word document or something like that. Um, most files of that type are below the limit of eight megabytes. The only time that you'll get above eight megabytes is if you're sending like high resolution photos or if you're sending people video files, but like for normal stuff, that shouldn't matter. And it looks like 
All right, got it. So the next big thing about text channels is that you can mention users. And that's sort of like a relatively recent thing that a lot of servers don't really have. What does that mean? It basically means you can say at someone's username and it'll notify them and it'll highlight the message for them. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty useful. Um, if someone has their notifications turned down or turned off, this will usually go through that. And so if you have a message that needs to get someone's attention, that's a great way to do it. Um, it also works for users with certain roles, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, there are also a few generic ones that you can do. So you can ping uh, everybody who's currently online and you can also just ping everyone who's in the server. And it just does the exact same thing. Um, pretty self-explanatory. And there's a bunch of sort of miscellaneous quality of life features. You know, it'll show when people are typing. Uh, you can set chat intervals or slow mode, basically make it so that people can only send messages um, every X seconds or every X minutes. Sort of very small features that improve the experience. On the other end, there are voice channels. And that's a bit of a misleading name because they aren't just for audio. They can handle video and screen sharing, just like a Zoom call. It's pretty sweet. It can handle all of those at once from multiple different users. Also pretty sweet. Um, by default, you can have as many people as you want in the voice channel, right? You can manually set a cap on it so like only 10 people can join this channel or only 25 people but by default if you want to put 500 people in a voice channel you can put 500 people in a voice channel there's nothing wrong with that um at the moment discord is still working on their net code for the video sharing so if anyone's using video it sort of automatically caps the channel at 25 users uh but that doesn't apply for screen sharing so if you're you know, for example, just going through a slideshow or, you know, showing a, a video or something, you can still pull more than 25 people into the channel and they'll all be able to see that no problem. Um, it's not quite as cumbersome as Zoom. You don't have to click a link to join a voice channel. You can just sort of click the channel itself and drop in and then drop out as needed. Um, so it's very simple and easy for people to participate in that. This does bring up the sort of complicated topic of user management because the thing about having a space as opposed to an event is that people will join a server and then stay for any length of time. And that means that you sort of have to be prepared for any level of engagement that they're going to have. And, um, you know, just be basically be prepared for things to go wrong, but also encourage people to engage the way that you want them to engage. The biggest thing for that in Discord that as far as I'm aware, no other platform uses is that you can assign roles to users, which are sort of like tags or putting them into groups. Um, those roles can have different names and different colors um, to sort of visually differentiate users. You can also grant uh, certain permissions to those roles. And so um, you can either restrict or allow, or both, people with certain roles from doing certain things. And that could include changing their nickname on the Discord server. That could include uh, sending files in chat. It could include sending chat messages at all. So you could set up like restricted channels, for instance. Um, you know, it, it's a way to prevent people essentially from coming into your server and messing things up. And as we've seen in recent months, um, Zoom is not perfect in that regard. And despite everyone's best efforts and despite Zoom's best efforts, um, Zoom calls are not 100% safe from malicious interference um, and sort of people coming in and, and Zoom bombing, basically. It's not 100% safe and secure. And so Discord basically allows you to set up preemptive restrictions on engagement. And so if someone does join with sort of malicious intent, you can put the kibosh on that really quickly. Um, so as I said, channels can be restricted to certain roles. Um, how might you use this for your organization? It's really up to you. You can use it to designate members of your club eboard. You can use it to designate just sort of server moderators, people who might not be part of your eboard, but are in charge of keeping the peace. Um, if you want to engage with college staff or faculty, you can differentiate them. 
Um, you know, you can have a role for guests who are maybe not necessarily members of your organization or even, you know, students at Holy Cross, you know, you can sort of differentiate them separately, give them different access. It's totally up to you. Whatever your organization needs or wants, roles can handle it. Um, and you can create and delete them pretty much on the fly. So there are a few examples of having channel restrictions. You can have a private text channel for the people in your organization's eboard. You know, maybe if you want to talk about stuff directly related to the club or, you know, anything that you don't necessarily want general club members to um, know about or general people in your server to know about. Not that there's any backroom dealings or conspiracies, but just sometimes you want to keep things in a private space. Um, you can also set up a system where, you know, if you're more concerned about non-students joining your server and you're not a big fan of that, um, you can have it set up so that users can only chat at all once they've confirmed that they're a student. Um, and we'll actually, we'll go over that a bit later um, because the Gaming and Esports Club does something um, that we think is pretty unique for that purpose, but that's something that can be done. Um, you know, you can also restrict, you know, images or files to being sent in certain channels. Maybe you have one channel that you don't want it to get really cluttered with any, you know, images or files or memes or anything. You don't want anybody to send that stuff in that channel. That's fine. You can set that up really easily and basically say, hey, if you want to send funny internet memes, put them in this channel. Don't put them in that channel. Um, and it's very simple to set that system up. Also, uh, on the topic of security, you can kick or ban users from your server whenever you want. Like, if someone joins and is causing trouble, you know, maybe if you're, if you're feeling nice, if you're feeling generous, you want to give them a warning, you want to give them a chance to knock it off. But realistically, if someone's coming in and it's really obvious that they're not there to engage positively and maybe they're not a member of your organization or they don't go to Holy Cross and they're just there to cause trouble, you can just remove them. You can just right click or tap on them if you're on mobile and just remove them from the server. Be gone. Um, pretty easy enough. Uh, and you can also ban them so that they can never come back. If you kick someone, then realistically they could come back. If you ban them, they're not coming back. And Discord logs all of those actions automatically. So no matter who does it, there's an unbroken record so that um, you can always go back and see, you know, hey, did we kick this user? Did we ban this user? Uh, did we warn them about what they were doing? You know, sort of what was going on. And you can review that after the fact in a pretty nice uh, log. So, okay, don't panic. This is what Discord might look like on desktop. There's a lot going on. It's very busy. I can understand. What you see over on the left side where it says guidelines and help and announcements and general uh, sort of all the way down, those are where the channels are in the server. So right now you can tell general is selected and then what we have in the sort of main body of the screen is uh, presumably the general text channel. This is obviously a screenshot. This is not actually Discord. If it was, I could go over and I could click on memes and it would just change in real time and I could see memes, easy enough. These sort of funky looking ones here in the bold text are categories. Uh, these three here for new users, club zone and voice rooms are minimized. So there are more channels in those categories, but they're not visible because then it would be a cluttered mess, of course. And as you can see, there are a few different features of the text chat that are sort of on display here. Um, this nice sort of orange fancy message um, that we sent just to sort of get people's attention for an announcement. Um, and then we have here uh, an embedded video, like I was talking about earlier, um, you know, and it's attached to this link here. And so realistically, people don't have to click on the link to watch the video. They can just click that little play icon and it'll play right there. And then it looks like it might be obscured, right? Down at the bottom is where you would presumably type your message. If you click the plus icon, you could send a little file. It's relatively straightforward. Um, it's just there's a lot going on in this particular image. It really is not that crazy. 
over on the right hand side, all of these names here are all of the people that are in the server um, or all of the people that are online at least. And so as you can see, some users are in different categories. Uh, those categories are set up according to the roles that are attached to users. <clears throat> and so, for example, up here, these two users have the admin role. And so they appear at the top and their names are in yellow so that everyone knows who the admins are. And then below them, we have two users who are part of the eboard. They are below the admins, but everyone still needs to know who the eboard uh, is. And then here, we've got an example, this is a particularly busy example, I guess, um, of what you might see when you click on a user. All of these you know, pretty colors and names here are the roles that that user has. And so any of those roles could be giving that user access to channels or taking away certain uh, abilities within the server. Um, and some of them could also be changing the color of the name. So you'll notice that user has sort of a lighter shade of pink, which I think is attached to the member role. Um, and so all of those roles can sort of be used to control what a user can or can't do and sort of make your server a bit tidier and a bit safer. If you were to right click on that user, or I think long tap on mobile, then you get this thing, <laughs> um, this big options menu of just you know all of these different things that you can do. Most of these options are not really that useful, um, but the two that I wanna draw attention to are just these two red options right here for kick and ban. Um, if this user was causing any trouble, he isn't, he's actually a great guy. Um, if he was causing any trouble, you could click either of those options and it would say, are you sure you wanna do this? And if you say yes, then it'll do it. Both of those options will remove them from the server. Banning will add on that they can't come back. Um, and then I believe there could be, if he was in a voice channel with you, then there would be other options. You could force him to not be able to speak. You could force him to not be able to hear. Um, those are a lot more situational. And as I said, you only see them when they're in voice channels. But the main thing that I'm getting at is, you have a lot of options for controlling what people can or can't do. And you can curate the experience and make it a bit safer and a bit more organized compared to other tools. So this is not quite on the main screen for a server. This is sort of in the background within the settings menu. Um, when you are setting up those roles, those tags that get attached to users, this is what you're gonna be looking at. And so over here, you have a list of all of the roles that are on the server. You can control their color, you can control their name. And then down here in this sort of bottom middle area, you can generally control what permissions people with that role will have. This is only a select sort of slice of the permissions that are available. There are a lot more there are a lot more that are sort of hidden below that. And so, you know, you can scroll down and see them. This is a screenshot, so obviously can't. Um, but, you know, you can very easily control, should this person be able to talk? Should this person be able to send images? Should this person be able to change their own nickname? Um, should this person be able to delete other people's messages? You know, all of these different settings to really make the server work exactly the way you want it to and exactly the way that you think it should. Which leads us sort of back to the million dollar question as has become very relevant with Zoom and with other services as everyone has sort of transitioned to being online. Um, there's harassment, there is abuse of the platform, there is specifically Zoom bombing. You know, like these are awful these are really just awful things that shouldn't be happening. And it's really nobody's fault that they happen. It's the fault of the perpetrators, but it's, you know, it, the, the question in everyone's mind is just how do we prevent it? Because these sorts of things do harm to our community. They don't just do harm to the people who are directly affected. They don't do harm to the 20 people who are in the Zoom call. They do harm to everybody at Holy Cross they do harm to, to pretty much everyone who uses Zoom because it sort of paints the platform in a bad light. And so, you know, what makes Discord special at preventing this? Um, there are a number of features that Discord has to keep things safe and secure and to make sure that no one is 
doing horrible things in your space. The biggest thing that we think should be highlighted is <clears throat> in order to join a Discord server, you need an invite link. Sounds pretty familiar because that's how you join a Zoom call is with an invite link. Um, you just click the link and boom, you're in the Zoom call. Discord invite links are a bit different from Zoom links though. Um, you can configure them to only be usable a certain number of times. If you have 40 people in your organization, you can send out a link that can only be used 40 times. And so if that link gets into the wrong hands and user 41 tries to join to cause some trouble, well, it's too late. It's already been used 40 times. So they won't be able to use that link. It's dead. They can also be set to expire after a certain amount of time. You can set that period of time as low as one minute. If you just wanna send someone a link really quickly and you're paranoid about that link getting spread around or concerned or um, you, know, you, you really wanna make sure that only that person is using the link to join, you know, have it expire after a minute or five minutes. And then if someone tries to use it half an hour later, they won't be able to, it's dead. Um, <coughs> At any time, you can see a list of the invite links that are active in your server and you can delete them or deactivate them at any time. Doesn't matter how many uses they have left, doesn't matter if their timer is still running, you can just click the little X icon and no matter where that link is, if it's posted on the internet, if it's on someone's notes app, it no longer works. You've just deactivated it, it's gone. Um, you can also restrict with roles <coughs> Excuse me. You can also restrict with roles who in your server is actually allowed to create those invite links in the first place. Um, and by default, everybody can. So if you just sort of pull a bunch of people into your server, if you haven't set it up uh, otherwise, all of those people can start making their own invite links and sending them off to their friends, um, you know, and, and sort of causing chaos, realistically, um, if people start joining who aren't really supposed to. And so you can control who's allowed to do that. You can say, nope, only I can create invite links, or only me and the eboard can create invite links. Or if you're maybe leaning towards an academic server, you might say only professors can make invite links. Um, and you can restrict who is able to manage those. And everybody else won't be able to generate their own links. And it sort of tightens up the security of the server a bit. There are other things that Discord has that are not invite links. Um, the first is verification levels. So you can have your server set up so that people can only join and engage in your server when they meet a certain criteria. Um, something that comes up a lot, I think, with Zoom and also with Discord and pretty much every service on the internet is people just making sort of throwaway accounts. Um, you know, just throw in a, a dummy email address and make an account that's not attached to you in any way, cause some trouble, and then you never have to worry about it again because, you know, it, it's just, it's not attached to you in any way. Um, this is a way of preventing people from doing that on your Discord server. And you can place certain restrictions on people based on how old their account is. Um, so if someone made their account 30 seconds ago, they won't be able to chat in your server. Um, you can make it so that people have to have a verified email address or a phone number attached to their account, which usually people who are making throwaway accounts don't bother with that because it's just sort of extra time and extra hassle and it's a way to trace it back to them. So that's a way to sort of filter out those malicious users while allowing legitimate users to still join and interact. Um, you don't have to use it. You can disable it completely if you want. You can also change it whenever you want. You don't have to call Discord support. You don't have to send an email. You don't have to wait two to four business days for it to update. It's just an option in the server settings and boom. You know, previously your server didn't require anything. Now everybody needs to have a verified email address. Easy peasy. Um, there's also, this is less about the people coming into your server and more about the people engaging once they're there. Um, you can enable what's called a slow mode on text channels, which basically means each user can only send one message within a certain interval. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, 
you can set that relatively low. You can say users can only chat once every 30 seconds. You can also set it pretty high. I think the highest it'll go is maybe six hours. So you can say, oh, a user can only send a message once every six hours. And you know, users are aware of that. There's a little timer in the lower right if you're impacted by the slow mode and it'll say, nope, you can't send any messages until this timer reaches zero. Um, that is less for malicious content and more for spam or, you know, in the more positive sense, crowd control. If people are really, really chatty and sort of, you know, overloading everything and the text is just moving, you know, faster than you can read it, then you can turn on that slow mode and say, you know, everybody calm down. And, you know, you can only send one message every five minutes so that everybody has a chance to keep up because there's a lot going on, right? Um, there is also some basic chat filtering. Um, Discord does a lot of this automatically. Um, obviously, no chat filter is 100% perfect, but most of the horrific content and sort of shock content um, automatically gets filtered out and Discord just handles it on their end and says, nope, you don't get to post that. That's horrible content. You're, you're not allowed to do that. Um, as I said, it's not perfect, but you know, it's a good starting place. Um, assuming that you have the correct permissions, which if you created the server, you do have the correct permissions always, um, you can delete people's messages at any time, not just your own, you can delete other people's messages. And so if someone says something that is inappropriate or classed as harassment, or um, just is, is sort of, you really shouldn't be saying that here, um, you can delete it. And people never have to look at it again. It doesn't have to linger. It doesn't have to keep um, hurting people or impact your community. You can just remove it and then you know, engage with that user however you see fit. If you just want to sort of remove them from the space or if you want to speak with them directly, totally up to you. But, you know, you can remove those harmful messages at any time pretty easily. Um, there is also a pretty deep user management system, which we went over earlier uh, with the roles and being able to control what's going on with access. Um, and there is also the option for a custom verification system. Uh, which we will sort of mention briefly in a little bit, because I know we are running a bit short on time. So this is just another screenshot. This is where you can set the verification level and the uh, chat filtering. So as you can see, there are a few different levels and you know it says pretty clearly what they entail. Um, verified email, these two are related to account age and then verified phone. And then uh, these three check boxes down at the bottom are just for the basic media filtering um, for sort of harmful content. Um, so what we're really getting at, what we're, we've sort of been getting at this whole time is uh, wh why? Why should you use Discord? Why should anybody use Discord? We've got Zoom. We've got GroupMe. We've got email. We've got phone calls. Like wh what makes Discord great? And we essentially narrowed down four big reasons that we think you might want to use Discord. So you might consider using Discord if dot, dot, dot. Um, if current methods for virtual engagement are really not doing it for you, if they're sort of working but barely, um, Discord might be able to help with that because it has a lot of additional features um, as compared to, say, Zoom. And the features that it shares with Zoom, in our opinion, it does better. It does in a more stable and um, secure fashion that can sort of improve the experience for people. Um, second is the idea of an always on space, which is sort of what we led with is separating events from spaces. Um, if you want to have that for members of your organization to be able to interact with each other and with you whenever they want, um, then yeah, a Discord server is a perfect solution for that to allow people to engage whenever they feel like it. Um, if you think that you can use Discord's more unique features for like virtual events that are unique to your organization, uh, case in point, the gaming and esports club, uh, we love Discord, we use it for everything, but 
you know, if you're sort of looking at it and saying, oh yeah, I know how I could use that. I know how my organization could maybe use that. Um, then yeah, definitely a good reason to give Discord a try. Um, and the last point, which is sort of related to the second point, uh, is if you want to be able to engage with members of your organization kind of on the fly, right? So rather than hosting a meeting or creating a Zoom call or sending out a group email or putting out a survey, all of these sort of discrete actions, if you just want to like chat with people, um, you know, as if you were hanging out in a lounge or in an office, um, then yeah. Discord is, is really great for that. And there is sort of nothing else um, like that that's available. And so, yeah, I am not entirely sure that we're going to have a ton of time for a demonstration. So I would actually prefer if we let off with any specific questions that people might have. And then in the sort of 10, 15 minutes that are remaining, assuming that we address everybody's questions, then maybe we could do a quick demonstration. But I really want to prioritize questions if anybody has them. Um, so you can drop them in the chat or you can just sort of call out. I think there's only seven or eight of us in the call. So it really is not a huge deal if you just sort of call out. You don't have to raise your hand or anything. Okay. All righty, all righty. Uh, Chris, Sandy, do either of you have any questions? I don't have any uh, questions per se. I think, thank you very much. I was um, very detailed and very um, good. As somebody who, who, um, who knows the platform very well, I thought you did a wonderful job in, in terms of explaining it, um, and specifically uh, between the, the channels and the servers and et cetera. I, Personally, I think just to echo some of the things that you said, um, I think this is a great resource for student organizations, especially as they're recruiting um, members and kind of like adding them um, to what would be the, the Discord channel because it allows you to, as we saw in your, in your screenshot, um, it allows you to kind of have like that welcome message, you know what I mean? And then like have the various channels that people can join. So I do think it's a huge resource in that sense as well. Um, so I just wanted to, to echo that, especially for the people that are going to be watching this video at a later time as well. Um, um, and I guess kind of like the only question is like, as people are setting up their own um, servers and stuff, if they have any specific questions, would it be all right for them to reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they, you can reach out to me, of course. You can also reach out to the club email address, which is gamingandesports at g.holycross.edu. No fancy characters, no hyphens, no capitalization. But for uh, Discord related stuff specifically, I am really not the top guy to talk to. Um, that would be Justin, who is here as well. Um, and so if you wanted to email him directly as opposed to emailing the um, the RSO email address, Justin, is it okay if I, if I dox you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Is chat recorded uh, as well? Is that something I can type in chat or is yeah. more audio? All right, yeah, I'll, I'll you can, that, Yeah, you can that. do both. Yeah. Um, right. Um, either way, they can see your name as well. So. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, I am knowledgeable and competent at Discord, but um, the Gaming and Esports Club Discord server specifically has been sort of a labor of love for over two years, and Justin has been, you know, running that like the Navy, and you know, it, it's gone really well, and so he is definitely like the master for any sort of specific questions. Um, you know, at, at sort of any stage in the process, if you have specific questions about whether or not Discord is a good fit for your group, or, you know, if you've set up a Discord server and you're sort of maybe running into technical snags, or if you're not sure what to do next or how to accomplish a certain thing, um, yeah, we're definitely open to people reaching out and we're happy to help in whatever way we can. Cool. Yeah. And I think another way to put it too is like, you mentioned a group man, how a lot of groups use that. The way I was thinking about it is sometimes when people get put into group me's or they join them, they often mute them. Yeah. The but first it's thing because they, they only, right. Like they're only looking for like certain things. So I think the good thing about discord too, is like, you're able to divide, right. Like your, your server into different channels. Um, again, like you can mute the general channel or like whatever channels you want and just have the channel that you need to get your information. 
Um, so putting it in that way for groups uh, to understand too, um, as I'm sure for many people, like they can have their own feelings about group chats, but I think this is also an efficient way of, of getting at some of this stuff as well. Right. Yeah, exactly. And because a lot of this stuff, um, there is no perfect formula for Discord server. A lot of it really is uh, like made to fit whatever you need it to. Like a lot of the stuff in our Discord, for example, would not exist in other people's discourse because it's stuff that is there, you know, because this is what we do. Uh, you know, if you are a club that runs a lot of events, you can keep a channel that has a live listing of all the events that you're running and the dates and times. If you uh, are more of a, not necessarily a, a text uh, based thing, you don't chat a lot in text, but you do chat a lot over voice, you can have more voice channels than we do and less text channels, or you can have more channels for uh, different categories of videos or images and stuff like that, depending on it's all really made to fit. So uh, and I think that's something for anyone in the call and anyone watching the recording. If you have questions on that, there's not a lot of stuff that we can go over generally that would help you out with what you want to do specifically. And every club is different, just like every server is different. So that's definitely something that don't hesitate to reach out because I mean, this, this server has been active for over two years, like Evo said, and it's changed drastically over and over as this, our sort of needs from it evolved. Uh, you know, more channels, less channels, more organization, less organization. So it's definitely a uh, a change living thing there. So, you know, if, if there are any unique questions, then we might have unique answers. Awesome. I think if no one has any other questions, I just want to uh, thank the both of you for offering this presentation and being here um, today. Um, and again, thank you for those that were able to join us. Um, so with that said, I will stop um, recording.